come back into the community? Um, well, I'm showing you a room. This would be a room for a woman and one child. So, um, pretty basic but adequate. We do have signs around the refuge, and this is one of them, which is, this is a no-hitting place. They just say, so no one can hit you in this house. And we say, no, no, it's a no-hitting place. This is where myself and my son stayed. This was the bunker. I felt quite privileged that I did have a view. I mean, in these circumstances, you have to make the most of everything. <laughs> so it was like, okay, son, you know, we're just on holiday and um, just pretend we're by the beach and you've got all this harakiki out there and just over there is the beach. <laughs> Our outdoor area. I'd often take the clothes racks off and put a couple of chairs here and us women would sit there and smoke up a storm. <laughs> Try to alleviate a bit of stress. <laughs> This is where my son often potted around on his bike. All the other kids. It was good to have a counsellor there to say, no, you're not crazy, you're just highly stressed. And it's not unreasonable because guess what? You're in fear of your life. You fight more than one thing. You fight homelessness, you fight addictions, and whatever trauma you've suffered throughout your life. So it's sort of a, a real bigger picture then. But you only know that when you start to reflect on things. At the time, it's probably a small picture to you or no picture at all. I really do believe that on the whole, people don't understand it. I don't think it's an easy thing to understand. It's not easy to understand that people have, have actually moved so far out of society that they don't have the normal links that, that we take for granted of going to the doctors, of going to schools, of um, interacting. And I really guess a good example of that is, you know, homelessness sometimes with people is about not talking to anybody else all day because they don't have any links into the rest of the community. people come here. We do have people that are living on the streets and living in cars, um, living in what we would call um, inappropriate accommodation or you know, without warmth and um, really without much shelter in some cases. Uh, but we also have a lot of people from um, council flats, Housing New Zealand flats and bedsits, people from boarding houses and the night shelter. Um, guests come in here as well. The main service that we provide here is breakfast and dinner in the soup kitchen for six days a week, Monday through to Saturday. The longer I've been here, the more I realise how important not only the food is to people that come in, but the company, um, the atmosphere, being able to meet up with people that they know and meet a few people that they don't know. Even if you rehouse someone, if you don't build social networks around them, you can't hold them in place, they won't stay, they'll go back on the street and we can understand why. Um, because people like to be with other people, they like to interact with others and to be stuck in a flat that you can't really afford and can't pay the power for by yourself is not really attractive, I think, for anybody. There was this old guy, he used to sleep under the trees down over there, he just had tarpaulin in that. And then there was um, a couple of my mates, Michelle and Kingy, and they used to sleep in the toilets over there. And then me and my missus, we used to yeah, sleep over there. So it was like a commune type of thing. Yeah, we all knew each other and you can't rip each other off and you know, watch out for each other's stuff in there. 
I miss the people, not the situation, but yeah, the people. Yeah, because they're good people. Yeah. And that's the greatest challenge of working with homeless people is to build them up, and you build it up by by having a conversation to actually talk and say good morning to a homeless person. Is 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 a huge social interaction. People will be in a park at a certain time of day because they know a person who walks their dog, who's quite a friendly person, will sit down and have a chat with them for half an hour. Now that casual conversation is incredibly important for that person maintaining a sense of who they are and really coping with the situation they're in. If you provide services for people, so people are in appropriate accommodation, they get the health care, they get the um, social supports that they need, um, it is much, much cheaper than providing um, emergency department care, um, intensive care, um, the police time, um, prison time, um, you know, the services needed that, if that support's not given. Million Dollar Murray um, was an article written by Malcolm Gladwell in the New Yorker in 2006. The article took an example of a homeless man in New York by the name of Murray and they costed the interface of the services that he used over the duration of his homelessness and found that adding up all his detox days, his hospital visits, his police cell nights, his social service usage came to a million dollars, therefore his name became Million Dollar Murray. And people thought, this is crazy. We are spending a million dollars of taxpayer funds maintaining this person mm. in a miserable homeless state. Is this the best we can do? We're not solving his problem of homelessness, we're maintaining his problem. And they worked out that wouldn't it have been cheaper to have bought him an apartment, given him a social worker and a nurse, then spend all this money on the provision of support services for him as a homeless man. Don't fuck. Blah. So do you, go, you know I'm making a documentary about homelessness at Fabio Pool. Yeah. Do you guys know uh, many young people who are homeless? Yeah. Really? Like, yeah. How many young people do you think are homeless in, in Wellington, do you think? Yeah. 20 to 50. Yeah. No, not that many. Yeah, no, there's so many. Yeah, there is quite a few, and we all look after each other. Yeah, really? We started to collect these homelessness statistics, and we realised when we started talking about them and um, comparing with other services that we seemed to be the only ones who were collecting that information. So, because we were a very small survey, it was just myself and then eventually a second staff, after a year or so, we had only a database of maybe 120 clients, but the homelessness data on those few people, they became um, very relevant nationally and they were sort of um, published and discussed and talked about and referred to. And I remember at the time thinking, yeah, it's great that um, people are so interested in this data, but it's not really representative because obviously the, you know, the sample is far too small, but that became, it became obvious then how little information was actually collected by services on um, homelessness? I think we could improve data collection in New Zealand. We don't have enough um, data on homelessness, which means we can't, we can't say how many people are homeless. There is no collection of data around food parcels, around housing. The, the, probably the only statistic we have is how many people are on the emergency waiting list, like A level for Housing New Zealand. That's probably the only statistic that anybody will even agree to. The rest of the ones, we give out our food parcel statistics so you get told that you're making up or you're lying. Um, we, if you put out a, a thing about poverty, they go, well, there's no de definition of poverty. We do need to know who's homeless, what's causing their homelessness, how long they've been homeless, what services they need, because um, you really need to specifically um, target services in order to prevent homelessness. Um, to the population that you've got, and if the, with the data we've got at the moment, that just isn't possible. Um, it's, I'd be really, I mean, you know, these questions make me think yeah, it would be really interesting to have data <laughs> and have statistics because there are a lot of interesting questions and we can't answer them, we don't know. So,
Do you know? No. <laughs> Some people might argue maybe it's through lack of data and information it's a relatively small problem but I would argue that excellent is a relatively small problem um, or small issue which I would argue that, it, that it's not and that it is actually larger than people consciously know now um, but if that was true then we're in an ideal position to stop it becoming um, a significant issue in New Zealand. I think that there is a need for us to determine and for us to look in New Zealand at a wider definition of homelessness and to not allow ourselves to be driven by a stereotype because the stereotype is not typical in fact. I think we need a consistent understanding of homelessness and stop putting heads in the sand I would call it. You know even my parents friends that I talk to they don't believe that there's homeless people in Christchurch. They don't, they just don't see it. It seemed like yesterday I was biking to school. I was like 12 years old biking to school and stuff. And then I thought, well, hang on, I'm 29. Where have I spent my life? You know, out here with nobody, you know, um, in Burwood Forest. You know, I wished I had my parents coming in and saying, right, bedtime, Carl, instead of, you know, some security guard coming over going, you can't sleep here, mate. In terms of improving New Zealand's response to homelessness, one of the first things and the, one of the most crucial things is central government recognition um, of homelessness and the, the adoption of um, one definition and some statutory um, legislation around responsibility and whose responsibility it is to respond um, to people who find themselves homeless. Um, in other countries, there's usually a primary piece of um, legislation its sole purpose is to clearly define who's responsible. Without central government policy there's no, you know, it doesn't exist as an issue. A starting point would be definitely to actually have proper data. A definition would help, I think, the society and for people to sort of say, hey, yeah, that is homelessness and those are things that we need to be, uh, I need to be concerned about. I think we have the knowledge today that, um, that we can do something about it.